Good morning and welcome to Supply Chain Africa News. My name is Wandabo Wanyama and today we are joined by Mr. Michael Makosala with an experience spanning for over 20 years in supply chain. I would like us to delve quickly into our questions. Most people do not know what is supply chain. So you as an expert in that field, what do you consider supply chain to mean? Supply chain, um, in a nutshell, basically, is a composition of so many different components um, put together, which basically encompasses all the functions in an organization. And it goes beyond one particular organization and, and works with other organizations within uh, its area of operation or the universe, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Because uh, supply chain touches on, you know, different components, different organizations, different professionals, di different professions to be able to bring together either services or commodities. Um, and it can include human resource, it can include finance, it, it can include distribution, it can include procurement, it can include uh, manufacturing, it, can, it also includes suppliers out there. Hmm. And uh, you know, when we talk about suppliers, we have the downstream suppliers and we have the upstream suppliers. So all these components put together, that is what makes up supply chain. Okay. And, th and th that is actually why the word chain comes in. Because as you can see, we have talked about different components. First, within the, o the organization on its own. Then for outside that organization, we have different organizations which need to work with this organization to get commodities moving. And this organization needs to work with the other organization. And the whole, you know, um, all those activities put together make that chain, you know? So the chain that you normally see put together represents all those, you know, um, activities, all those organizations and all those expertise professions. Because you see, you cannot get goods going or commodities moving without finance without HR, without transportation, without uh, production, without, uh, you know, um, people providing goods and services. You need all these people. That is what basically makes up su supply chain. But a lot of people start looking at supply chain from the time the commodities are seen. A lot of uh, activities come into play, including conceptualization of the need that is required to get that to get moving up to the time that need or idea is converted into either a service or a commodity. Okay. Then what about logistics? A lot of people start thinking and dis dis describing or defining um, supply chain or logistics from the time they see the goods moving. Okay. But before those goods are either delivered or being loaded into a truck. The process of conceptualizing the need, converting that need into a document known as a requisition. Then from there you go into the planning of designing how that product needs to look like, specifications and all that. Uh, that process brought all the way up to either the manufacturing point when now the product has been manufactured and now it is being moved from the point of um, storage to the point of need. That is now what brings in logistics. And under logistics, we have distribution, we have transportation, you know, yeah. we have clearing, clearing, clearing of the commodities from the sea. Yeah. 
and so many other things. Okay. So that basically explains, that portion explains what logistics is. Okay. Logistics also entails planning okay. because you have to know about route distribution. Which route are you taking? Which is the most optimum route? Which is the most cost-effective route to get those commodities where it is needed? Okay. So basically, um, a, lot of it, a lot goes into that aspect of distribution as well because you need to, you need to think about route distribution. You need to look at uh, which is the most um, optimum route which is the most cost effective and you also need to look at um, uh, you know the, the time period within which the commodity needs to be in the place where it is required so okay. all those components put together mm -hmm. make up what is known as logistics okay but a lot of people only look at logistics from the aspect of movement of commodity from one point to another point without taking into consideration all these other factors we've talked about okay Speaking of all those factors, in your opinion, what do you think are the key factors before one selects a certain mode of transportation? Now, selection of mode of transportation depends on several factors. Number one, it uh, might be dictated by, by the, the size of the community that you're moving mm -hmm. and uh, where you are moving it from. Uh, prox proximity to the point from, uh, I mean, of the point of acquisition to the point of uh, or delivery. Um, then it can also depend on uh, the perishability, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the storage requirements. For example, let us assume that you're moving vaccines from one point to another. Um, vaccines require that they are maintained at a specific, um, you know, kind of temperature. Um, you need to, they need to be within a specific type of temperature or throughout the time. So you might ask yourself, which is the best route, therefore? Is it by air? So that they get there where, when they are still in a merchantable state, um, which, which would basically uh, ensure that they are usable. They are still of uh, the same state and uh, value of, at, I mean, at the time of acquisition, um, uh, and that they are not, they, are not, uh, um, they have not gone bad. You know, yeah. so depending on the type of uh, product that you're moving, if it is a product which has a long life, um, long shelf life, you know, it doesn't it, it doesn't expire, it doesn't go bad, and what have you, mm -hmm. and also the weight, those are th things that you can look at, and then you can also look at the place where you're moving the goods to. Mm -hmm. um, um, do we have sea transportation? How how long will it take? What is the what is the need? Um, how fast are they required? You know, there is something known as lead time. Mm -hmm. when, uh, the when the commodities were being acquired, you must have agreed with uh, whoever, the, re the, the requester, how much time they required. Okay. So all these factors t are taken into account and they are actually incorporated at the planning and procurement stage. So these are, um, you know, when, when you are... Um, um, when you have received a requirement and you are reviewing the requirement and planning the acquisition, factors of, tra of mode of transportation come into play okay. at that point. Okay. They don't come into play when the commodities are in the warehouse. Okay. You start thinking of, is it going to come by air? If so, how much is it going to be? Is it going to be come by sea? How long will it take to come, to come into the country? Yeah. What are the st uh, activities that will, uh, it will need to go through like customs and all these kind of things, intermodal transportation into the, from sea to uh, inland transportation, all these factors. Okay. Yeah, so lots of uh, activities and thinking, um, you know, is normally um, undertaken the moment the need has been identified and the need has been communicated to the procurement experts such that when they are documenting and putting that need, the specification, into a purchase order. Those factors of transportation need to have been factored in mm -hmm. prior to releasing the purchase order to the supplier. Okay. Recently, Kenya signed an agreement with other African countries on intra-trade. How do you think 
it is the whole uh, trade agreement is going to affect how business is done in Kenya? I, in, my, in my thinking, um, I don't think there will be quite an impact because that agreement, in my view, I think is basically just going to reduce the um, tariff costs, you know, between one country to another because different countries have different custom regulations. So they are pro the, 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 this is going to bring about harmonization of uh, the tariffs and, and might also probably just speed up the processes of clearing commodities from one, one uh, border to another. Uh, it's going to bring about uh, free movement of commodities um, and it will also probably enhance um, um, supply of uh, commodities from one point to another. Mm -hmm. It might probably reduce the cost of operations or the cost of commodities um, because of you know, the fact that the tariffs have now been taken away. Okay. Uh, it will increase investments, in my thinking, mm -hmm. because um, um, lots of commodities will be exchanged and uh, uh, it will actually bring down prices, commodity, prices of commodities because it will now be easily av available, easily accessible, and the movement of people is going to be in, in, encouraged. Um, that might actually open up, um, you know, the trade, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. Speaking about investments, don't you think the wealthier countries will benefit more as compared to poorer countries? I, that is a possibility because, you see, African countries have not been used to trading amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. African countries have actually been um, importing more commodities than exporting. Um, but I think it is going to be a wake-up call uh, to the African countries because now they will have an opportunity of actually exporting their commodities. Um, at the beginning, or the, 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 the developed countries will have an advantage because they are of course, already geared towards exporting their, their products to different countries and to the developing countries particularly. So we might have, um, you know, these uh, small developing countries flooded with a lot of commodities. But like I said, it's going to be a wake-up call for the African countries to also start thinking of exporting their products. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because now it's, fr it's a free trade opening up uh, a trade of you know, with different countries, and and with the tariffs, uh, I mean, costs reduced, mm -hmm. this should actually give them an opportunity mm -hmm. to actually also export their commodities and and market their commodities mm -hmm. to to the outside world. Okay. So that it will be beneficial to uh, both developing countries and the developed countries. Okay. The developing countries have been more or less. Uh, selling their wares within their t their boundaries, but now this is opening it up for them. Okay. So in a sense, while we one would put it that the developed countries would be would be benefiting, mm -hmm. um, you know that is principally because they have been pushing their products, and the develop the the developing countries have not been pushing their products. Okay. So it is a wake up call, like I said, for the for the developing countries to start thinking of where can we sell our produce okay. or products. Okay. Yeah, so that they stop being a consumer, um, you know, group of people, um, but also start thinking of export production okay. and that kind of thing. In the recent past, uh, Asia has overtaken Europe as the trade partner for Africa. What do you think, or how will inter-African trade affect the relationship between Asia and Africa, considering their products are easily available, and these ones probably they might be expensive that we are producing from African continent. I started by saying that the African um, free trade agreement is basically going to open up the markets, and uh, the key thing that we, uh, or that the, this trade is going to bring about is the harmonization of uh, the, the border trade, the okay. custom, you know, restrictions and, and the tariffs. Mm -hmm. That is actually going to bring down co cost of uh, commodities. 
So when it brings down cost of, cost of commodities, what's going to happen is that the prices will actually level out. And even the prices of commodities which were expensive will now apparently not be moving and gradually the prices will come down and will basically find their level, which would therefore mean that uh, the best products in terms of quality and, and, and several other factors or like that will, will come into play. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the issue of whether Asia or, or has overtaken Europe or something is, uh, you know, going to play out because mm -hmm. soon enough mm -hmm. the, the prices will level out okay. and now people will be looking at mm -hmm. which, is, which one has the better quality than the other. Mm -hmm. So the issue of one surpassing the other may actually be overtaken by events because perhaps the reason why Asia, the Asian uh, you know, continent was able to take over was because of the fact that they were bringing in uh, similar products or at, at lower prices, yeah. but probably the, the quality was not, you know... Yeah, the standard of, quality. <laughs> of, a, of, of, ...of commensurate, uh, you know, either to, in comparison to the other one. Okay. Let's talk about uh, embracing technology in supply chain. As the experts in the field, what are you doing to make sure that you're incorporating technology in supply chain? Our technology is coming along, is actually moving in tandem with supply chain because supply chain tends to, um, you know, let me put it like this. Technology is, is, is trying to embrace itself with different um, um, professional disciplines. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way it is embracing itself with, uh, with uh, finance, with transportation, with uh, you know, uh, supply chain management uh, is, is, is more or less moving along together because technology cannot operate on its own without all these disciplines. Mm -hmm. uh, take an example of um, finance, for example. Previously, payrolls and, uh, you know, or payments were being done manually mm -hmm. using, um, um, you know, or payroll documents or Kalamazoo and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But gradually, mm -hmm. these were trans transferred into Excel spreadsheets and, and, and some um, softwares. So the same is happening in supply chain. Um, a good example in supply chain, for example, would be when a commodity is uh, shipped, let us say in Netherlands, you can be able to actually track that commodity electronically just by putting it into some system and it will be it will be able to tell you when it was loaded when it has been shipped when it when it has reached its destination up to the time the person who was meant to receive it actually signs it okay and uh, that can be again the signature aspect can be uploaded into the system mm -hmm. and it can be seen by everybody using barcode technology, mm -hmm. and all these other um, facets of uh, technology. So uh, look at procurement, uh, for example. Uh, procurement was originally not linked with warehousing. Um, when, for example, the warehouse was able to reach the reorder level of uh, you know, commodities in, uh, in the previous times, okay. what used to be done was that the person in the warehouse had to notify the person in procurement, you know, manually yeah. by documentation or all. But now the systems have been interlinked such that the procurement all, all simply needs to, you know, click a button and, in, and all the list of items that have reached the order level that require to be replenished mm -hmm. would come into his screen okay. with prices that were actually used last time. Mm -hmm. And he simply needs to verify with the market whether those prices are still valid the same, yeah. and place an order. Yes. And, and these days, the order is simply transmitted to the supplier. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be printed out and you give it to a, a, a rider or a delivery person to deliver it to the other supplier. Then again, using what is known as... Um, um, electronic data interchange. This, sometimes, you know, the supplier is the one who actually gets that notification along with the procurement and he realizes that these commodities have now reached the order level. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you see is that there, there is a truck delivering those goods based on that information which is, you know. Yeah. So, 
um, supply chain is actually embracing technology very, very well, mm -hmm. and it is even making work a lot more easier. Yeah. Uh, very little, um, you know, time is taken to put commodities, to put a lot of thoughts together to get the supplies moving. Okay. Yeah. In your opinion, uh, looking at it from a, a global perspective and locally, how did COVID uh, affect supply chain? Um, what I would say is that um, COVID technically brought operations to a standstill. Because as you are aware, there was no air transportation. Uh, there was no, there was uh, virtually no sea transportation. And the, the, the inland transportation which was, which, which was taking place, I believe was just moving commodities within that particular territory. Because you will realize that these three modes of transportation, air, inland, and inland transportation, depend on one another. Okay. Uh, commodities moving from um, one another continent to, to an, from one continent to another uh, reach the port of destination okay. and are taken over by the inland transportation. Yes. So if there was no air transportation, that means that uh, the inland uh, um, transportation was actually affected adversely. So there were no commodities moving. I particularly remember going to a pharmacist, I mean a, a, a chemist, to buy some um, you know, uh, drug. And uh, that person told me that, you know, since COVID, um, you know, struck, getting commodities brought into the country has been a challenge. Okay. Which means that the consumers were basically using what was in the country. And if that was to, to persist for more than a year or so, mm -hmm. I can assure you that most countries, particularly the ones who, who de depend on uh, imports, mm -hmm. were going to suffer adversely. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of their, that, therefore, that basically tells you that supply chain was greatly impacted okay more so with um, you know not only acquisition of commodities but also or movement of these uh, commodities to the point of need okay they were not able to get there because the entire system was interrupted uh going forward if uh, another pandemic god forbid strikes what's a different thing that uh, you as the experts would have done or would do you know Perhaps we, uh, one would say that nothing much really would be done in order to correct that situation. Because you see, commodities are actually acquired or based on need. You cannot uh, overstock your supplies, um, you know, to be able to take care of um, situations of, uh, you know, this kind of, of pandemics procure commodities based on the consumption or records. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overstock, neither do you want to understock. understock. Yeah. You basically try to ensure that uh, you are operating at um, some optimum level that will be able to uh, you know, give you um, profits or um, make you realize uh, your, your objectives. Mm -hmm. without having to spend a lot of money. Okay. So if that pandemic were to strike today, it would impact commodities that are waiting to be shipped. Because if they again um, bring to a standstill transportation of air transportation, mm -hmm. sea transportation, even if you were such an expert, I don't see how you would actually make that situation better. Yeah. So the only thing that we need to do is to work with all different professionals, mm -hmm. you know, the health experts, um, the, the customs, uh, border trade, uh, you know, the immigration, and uh, respect the uh, professional bodies like WHO and all others, so that all these, whatever, whatever guidelines that they give us, Mm -hmm. uh, we should follow okay. so that we do not have this kind of, uh, you know, pandemic. Because 
WHO was actually able to notify the world long before of this pandemic, but people did not take it uh, you know, seriously, and that is how it was able to spread. Mm -hmm. You will realize that what made it spread more okay. was actually the air transportation or aspect, people moving from one continent to another. Mm -hmm. uh, because if actually it was stopped at that point, you know, and mm -hmm. the border, the immigrations were, were strict, the health personnel were strict or from, you know, checking people coming to their countries and ensuring that they meet all the, those requirements. Mm -hmm. Or I believe it would have been controlled in a better manner. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. We really appreciate for you giving us the insights. Thank you. Thanks so much and uh, wish you the best. Thank you.